Yo, the clips you just watched are from an amazing Instagram account called Fortify Strength. Now, today, I wanna to introduce you to the man behind that account for two reasons. One, because he's just a great dude. And two, because he's offering an awesome service that I think will help you gain better, but also live healthier. He does online movement screenings to help gamers identify potential issues in their movements that may be causing them pain. The best and most unbelievable part about this is that he does it for free. I absolutely love what he's doing, so I did a movement screening with him so I could show all of you what it's like to go through it and to let him explain the benefits of doing one. This is the first time I'm doing a video like this, and I have to apologize in advance. Because of the way I recorded it, sometimes the video is going to look a little weird and laggy, but I learned a lot from this, and the next time that I do a collaboration video, I'm hoping that I can do it differently and the quality be a little bit better. So, enjoy the video. Ready to go? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so, formally meeting you for the first time. Um, my name is Salvador. I am a physical therapist by trade. Uh, I have my doctorate in physical therapy. So, um, I'm pretty familiar with basically what you would typically think of as a gamer. People like to put a certain kind of connotation to like what a gamer is, but I've seen that they just come in all shapes and sizes. With that said though, because of the limitations that were put on like, you know, when we are gaming, because we will kind of sit in the same way, we'll kind of use the same type of mice, uh, we'll be playing the same game. So there are these things that are, I, that tend to happen to gamers mm -hmm. more in general than other populations. So I saw a lot of workers comp people, so people who work in the office for 20, 30 years, and they have all of these things that tend to happen to them. My, but with gamers, they have the same things, but they happen when they're 20 years old. So they start to get these conditions that you would see in like someone who's like middle-aged, who's been working in office for 20 years, but you see it in a 20 year old. Right. So that is the other side of the issue. So while we're all, we come in all shapes and sizes, when we tell our bodies to do a similar task, similar things are going to happen. What I did notice too, is I think, you know, you can kind of empathize here is that there hasn't been a lot of communication between like the health side of things and gamers. A lot of the time when you look on Instagram or all of these other social media, it's always these like really super buff people or like wearing scanty clothes and stuff. Um, and I feel like their messaging is is very geared to a certain type of person who, who and that market seems pretty full like a lot of people are doing that but no one's talking yeah. to the I, gamers you know I, I i have the same issue because i just put out some some like workout videos and it's funny because when i go online and type out home workout to see you know like what other people in that sphere are doing it's just mm -hmm. like from start to finish these super ripped dudes or these like really yeah. attractive uh, women. Yeah, exactly. and, and then here yeah. I am in like a hoodie with, with, with <laughs> yeah. no ripping, you know, like bulging muscles. I'm like, hey, let's work out. I know. So it's, and it's, it's so important that people see people like them. So what we started to do is, you know, with this whole pandemic and everyone being inside, uh, we started doing these movement assessments, movement screens. It's basically kind of like uh, an evaluation. We're just doing them for free, just to get people to kind of open up the, those those communication channels again and um, figure out what they can do in order to help them keep healthy while we're all stuck indoors. To make it um, really accessible and, and not something yes. that's only available to people with money or to people mm -hmm. with really good health insurance, things like yeah. that. It's also hard to to have that buy-in when people don't even know how something like this can help them. Mm -hmm, you know, sure. so, so sometimes it's, you, you don't even know like the purpose of it or how it can help you. So why would you one, seek it out and two, pay mm -hmm. for it? Okay. Not so, to say that um, it's not worth paying for. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, so here's some of the things that I believe are really important about getting these um, movement screens or let's call it a movement checkup. Um, because for example, I, I like to use dentists a lot of the time. We're so invested in how we appear and like our appearance. We go to the dentist once a year, at least maybe twice a year to get just a checkup. But when you come, when it comes down to it, like how much does that oral health and like appearance really affect your health? I mean, right. there, there are studies that, that it does something, right? Mm -hmm. But what about movement? How come people don't have a movement checkup or a movement screen 
um, why do people not do yeah. uh, in, integrate just like brushing your teeth a little bit of movement into their day? I, I think when they take it for granted. Things, That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, when you look at how much just even a little bit of movement can improve someone's life, mm -hmm. um, why are we not brushing our teeth? Why are we not doing this daily ritual of, of doing even just minor movements, right? So that's one of the things is it's, it's just kind of hey look let's let's check the health of where, where you are right now so the first thing i look at right the most important is do they have an actual injury that they need to get looked at further next um is preventing injuries from happening because i i watch from top to bottom uh, a bunch of movements that should look a certain way based on average and then I use my clinical knowledge to kind of figure figure out what specifically is the kind of kink in the chain. You can have injury, you can have pain from those things. So that's the things that we try to take out of this movement assessment. And finally, um, it's more it's a, it's good to have a baseline for um, where you are currently, because you can use that baseline to see improvement in the future. If you don't know where you're starting, how do you know, like? you know, you've made improvements. Yeah, right? that makes sense. So you had said that you start off these uh, these evaluations with like a medical history, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like a very basic thing, just to, how do I put this? I just want to inform what I see. Right. So for, for example- so To put context um, to everything. Context. So typically how I do this is I would just kind of have a quick conversation about, um, so like, what does your typical day look like? I mean, that's pretty much um, about how far I go in terms of uh, just the background. It's just uh, like, once again, give context to the movement. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. I'm gonna take you through the whole like overview. So this is called the top level. It's just me seeing the entire system. Mm -hmm. um, and then, gonna, and based on what you tell me here, hopefully that'll inform me. So that's the basic overview, um, the overview of things. So those are basically movements that when you put them all together, these are pretty much what you do in your everyday life. Now, from what I saw on them, it kind of cues me into a few things I want to look at a little bit closer. I want to look a little bit at a little bit about how your kind of spine moves a bit. And then I want to look at your shoulder. And then I want to look at a few things in the lower extremity um, just because of what I saw kind of in the last squat. Okay. Okay. So let's start with um, the spine because that's something I really want to look at. Um, so uh, what I want you to do is we're going to go into like a quadruped position. So just like this. Yeah. It, it probably helps Great. when you do this with someone who works in physical therapy. Yeah. And you yeah. don't have to say <laughs> Exactly. So I have to say quadruped. Good. So now I have a, basically a list of things. Oh, a list. Well, it's like you. I'm just joking. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, so basically, when I saw the whole thing, certain things stood out to me. Um, okay. Give it to me straight. <laughs> the the only thing that really stood out to me a lot during the movements was the shoulder issues mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of stuff at the end of the squat. So with what I did see is the the limitations that you have, it's not mobility. I don't think a lot of it comes from mobility. It comes actually from motor control. How do I know this? Is when I put you in positions where you had more support and you just had to do the movement, 
it kind of changed things. So like when I had you um, prone on the floor and you were doing the same motion, you said it kind of changed a little bit because you, you kind of caught on to it. You're, you're like, oh, maybe I'm not able to compensate the same way when I'm laying down on the floor. The exercises that I would look for for you are specifically those scapular control exercises. So that would be my number one thing for you. Um, down the list, now I have several other things that I would say are number several? two, number three. <laughs> They're just minor. It's better to err on the side of work on it rather than, oh yeah, you're good, you're good. Right, exactly, right? So exactly. But exactly it's funny because right. the competitive so, nature in people is like, you yeah. know, it was good, right? I, I'll do it again, I can do it again. <laughs> No, I've seen a lot of um, I've seen a lot of people get mad at me. They're like, "What? No, look, I'm like doing it right." <laughs> no, what no, trust me, about? trust. Give me another yeah. chance, please. Give me another chance. <laughs> That's why it's funny when I record people and then I show them. I go like, "Look, man, like, look what you're doing. This is what it's supposed to look like. You see yeah. this? You see this?" The last things I'd say is like a little bit of uh, spinal mobility in the upper T-spine, okay. and then the, the hamstrings is what I saw. All of these kind of come into play, so. Like I said, it's lower on the list. I'd rather have you work on your scapular motor control. Mm -hmm. But if you work on that, it makes everything move better. Find the deficiencies and then work on them. And then later down the line, you kind of watch it again. Hey, that looks better now. So cool. Um, that's how, how this all works. And hopefully when someone comes in for a movement assessment, they come out knowing a little bit more about their body and knowing that they can do stuff to get better. That's the most important thing. So then, okay, so we we talked about the benefits of movement screening, even for gamers, you know, because a lot of people, a lot of people think that the, like these kind of movements or these kind of deficiencies don't matter for a gamer because they're not, they're not playing a traditional sport. But we talked about how it still matters. It's still important and it affects more than just when you're sitting at the desk playing a game or sitting on your couch. It's, it, you know, improvements to your movement affect you in all parts of your life, right? So they're important for gamers. We talked about um, adding context to these movements with someone's history as well as their goals for the future and what they want to see and how they want to improve, right? Then we went over the movement screening and, and what I'm deficient in. And what blows my mind about all this is that you do these this for free. It's nice to talk with someone who I, like I, I can relate with, you know, like it's everything that you're talking about is the same thing that I try to achieve with what I'm doing as well. So it's it's awesome that we can come together and, and like, you know, it's just put this out into the world, especially right now with everything that's going on. It's even more so, you know, people are going to be stuck in the house more often or more than usual. And people are going to want that kind of assistance. But like you said, they don't want to they want to limit exposure to everything that's going on right now. So yeah, no, I appreciate um, you reaching out and you know, we got to keep close because this yeah. is a very small, I, I very agree. Small it's, niche, it, right? it is, it is. And, and um, yeah. I think you're doing a great job and I'm glad that we got to do this together. And I hope that the people watching take advantage of this amazing resource that you're, that, that you're offering to them. Um, so thank you very much for oh, doing it. Just to sign up, if you want to sign up for a movement assessment, mm -hmm. you can go to our Calendly. So it's Calendly, that, like, I don't know if you can do the- Yeah, yeah, like, I'll put something on screen. So it's calendly.com slash fortify STR. Okay. And then basically they just click on movement assessment and all of our schedule opens up and you just make your own schedule. You I, I hope people it. take advantage of it. And I, I hope so too, because my goal is to help. This is a perfect time to do it. This yeah. is the perfect time. You have no distractions, no excuses. You can you can start amazing habits right now at home. And when this when, when things start to normalize, you can use this as a springboard to continue doing it and make yourself even better. Well, thank you very much once again. All right, thanks. Um, All right. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Great, see ya. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you take advantage of this amazing resource. Salvador is doing fantastic things, so go check him out. Now, as always, if you enjoyed this video, then subscribe and hit the like button and all that typical YouTube stuff. Until next time, I'll see you later. Peace.